Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are in a new room. It's kind of echoey. I don't have a rug in here yet, so I need to get one. But I did a video where I moved my entire animal room to this room. It was a pretty interesting long video. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave it in the description box below. But if you're brand new here, my name is Kristen Leanne. I am a, an animal keeper. I rescue a lot of my animals. Most of the animals that I have are rescued. And if you've been keeping an eye on my social and you've been here for a little bit, we are adding another animal to the family at the end of May. And if you don't keep an eye out on all of my socials, then I guess you're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, I do have two YouTube channels. I've got this one, and I also have one that is more like day in the life of a mom, pregnant mom, um, vlog style, makeup, hair. Um, I have a 10 month old and I'm also pregnant right now. So, very busy over here. I was inspired to do this video because not only did you guys ask for it, but I was cleaning all my superworms a day ago and I was just like, holy shit, I have so many superworms. Like, this is amazing. Because if you've been keeping reptiles for a few years and you remember not that long ago, there was a period of time where you couldn't buy superworms anywhere. Um, I tried to look it up online so I could be a little more precise with my facts, but I couldn't find anything. So that that uh, it didn't help me out. But there was a period of time recently where superworms basically, it was something like where they weren't turning into the darkling beetles or they weren't pupating. I think it was they, they, were, they were pupating and then they weren't turning into the darkling beetles. So if you were like me, you're probably sitting there scratching your head, well, shit, where am I gonna get superworms? Because my animals, I don't know about yours, love superworms. Mealworms, take it or leave it, superworms, always a perfect item to add to the menu. They're always in, they're always down. So when this happened, I was just like, why don't I, why don't, why don't I just go ahead and breed these myself? So I watched a couple videos and I tried my hand at breeding them myself and it has been super easy. There are a few key things that will prevent you from being successful, which I will go over in this video because I have heard them from other people and I have encountered a couple of those things myself. And certain things that you think like, would just be obvious, but it's not. So let's go ahead and jump right in and I will show you how to quickly and easily breed your own superworms. Um, they're also kind of like pricier compared to mealworms. So being able to just breed your own superworms and not having to go buy them or rely on an external source is like always perfect. Speaking of breeding insects for your animals, I rescue a lot of animals. I have a lot of animals, so I don't know if you do, and but if you do, um, which most likely you do if you're watching this video, I also have a video about how I breed my dubia roaches and I have been like hugely successful with that. <laughs> I have like too many of them actually that I've been selling them to a local guy who owns a pet store here and actually giving them to him as well. I'm just like, whatever you wanna pay me, just like, fucking take them. Like I've got so many of them. So, um, yeah, I've been pretty successful with that too. I will link you to that in the description box below. So without further ado, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will pull out my beetles and my superworms and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Also is very inexpensive to do so. So let's get started. You're going to need a few different bins for this. I use two different bins in order to breed my superworms. I am not interested in separating them by size. If you are interested in separating them by size, you're gonna need probably four or five bins uh, total for the brand that has the eggs in it and then the little worms and all of that. But I just don't separate mine. The reason being is that I have so many reptiles um, that I just pick through it and grab the super worms that I need and I just don't have the space to, this crow is like, just stealing the show back here. Um, I just don't have the space to store this many um, containers. So yeah, I just, I'll show you what I do. And then if you want to separate them, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and if you have the space, then go for it. All right, so today I'm gonna show you the easy, easy, easy setup for a super um, breeding super worms and keeping them. But I do wanna show you this because a lot of people use this drawer system for their beetles and for just breeding in general. Um, or they use this bigger one. The darkling beetles and superworms cannot crawl up the sides of these, so even though it is pretty shallow, you are good. 
So this is a very easy, organized, affordable way to do it if you'd like. And um, I just keep all of my superworms in one bin. I do not separate them by size, but if you are someone that does want to do that, this is a great way to do it. You can put little labels on here of when you put the bran with the eggs in here. So when they hatch, you know that this one is younger than this one, vice versa, or not vice versa, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So let me show you how oh, someone's deciding to come out. You coming out? She's been like digging nonstop and I need to reinforce the bottom of this because it can't hold all this even though there's vermiculite in there. So I put it down there for her and she's just been letting herself out as she pleases all day. So you're probably gonna hear her in the background. All right, so this is, I have not fed them today, I just cleaned this out, so. Um, this is wheat bran down here. You can get this at your local feed store. It is very affordable. You can get a giant like three foot tall bag for like $25. You can also use um, Missouri. That's what my vet told me to use, but honestly, that's just way too freaking expensive. And I like to just gut load my insects with fruit and veggies. And then I do add a little bit of Missouri food in here as well, but to use the bedding and use Missouri for me, that's just like, that's, that's way too rich for my blood. Um, so these are my little guys. I have probably about, um, eight beetles in here maybe. So I have some egg crate for them to crawl around on and I also have these guys in here. They absolutely love these. You can cut a bunch of these and staple them in the center and kind of fan the pieces out from one another on the ends. And they love to lay eggs on those. They love to lay eggs on this as well. So I leave that in there for them. Um, so there you can see quite a few of them. So I, ha I think I have about eight of them, like I said. So for water, um, I just, put a little paper towel thing in here and this is where I put their food or I put it on here. This they like to use the most. So what I typically do is leave them in here with this setup for about two weeks and then at the end of two weeks, or you can do it another way, which I'll tell you in a second, you then transfer this bran to a new bin and if you're using this setup, you can put it in one of these and put the date on there that you transfer it and there will be, you won't see them, but there will be thousands of little eggs in here um, or in here. This is, the reason I have this in here is because of what I'm gonna tell you right now and how I do it. So I do not take this out every two weeks personally. What I like to do is I wait until I see movement in the wheat bran. Sailor, you are so loud. I'll do this and I'll look really closely. And a lot of times you can see movement in here. You will not see it right now because this is brand new wheat bran. Um, I'm not even sure if there's eggs in it yet. I changed it yesterday. So I will wait until all of the worms have hatched and they're just so, so, so tiny that, I mean, they're like so little that you barely see the wheat bran moving. At that point, I will then move them to a new bin. I just grabbed a carrot and gave them a little bit of food. Typically I give them much smaller pieces. So you're gonna wanna feed them things like carrots, um, fresh fruits and veggies, greens I'll put on here, Missouri. So they have a variety of things. You will also notice that your darkling beetles will start to lose limbs. See how he's missing part of that one? Another one he's missing one of his little antennas. If you do not give them a large enough space and enough stuff to crawl on, they will start to kind of um, kill each other. Also, they'll cannibalize each other if they do not have enough food. So I struggled with that quite a bit. These guys have been surviving great for a while, although they are missing a couple like limbs and whatnot. I could probably make this bigger, but I have not a whole lot of space. So we're working with what we got and they're producing plenty of superworms for me. So once it's been a while, I would say probably about three weeks I wait um, and I will look through this and if there is movement, I will go ahead and move all of these guys into a bin, a clear bin 
and I will take all the bran and I'll move it into a container like this. I used to put the dates on here to just kind of keep track of everything, but I just don't really care anymore. I just put everything in one. So this is my super worms here. And as you can kind of see, they are pretty much all different sizes. Um, so I just put fresh carrots in here and that is, you know, see there's like this guy and then much bigger ones. So, and then there's a little mealworm beetle in there. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to like throw him away or throw him outside. So I just left him in here for now. But I have all different size super worms in here and every single super worm in here was bred from an egg to where it's at now. So I just kind of pick through here and um, grab the sizes that I need for the different animals that I have. And I just added new wheat bran into here from here. So if you're gonna do it like I am with just the two bins, let me show you what I use to clean. So when I was ready to add my bran from here yesterday, I had all this bran in here with these guys. So what I did was I took a sifter like this that I bought on Amazon and I sifted out all of the bran that obviously had no eggs in it anymore or babies because it had been a very long time since I had changed it. I tossed it and then I put all of my superworms back in this empty container and then I poured all of this bran into here and that's what we have right here. So there are very, 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 very tiny little babies in here. And I'm probably not gonna be able to show you any because they're literally so tiny. Like you can kind of see them sometimes if the brand is moving, but they're really, really, really little. Um, and they're, they're all in here. You just <laughs> can't really see them because they are so tiny, like they're almost microscopic. So they're all in here and they will, I will start to see little, little tiny, tiny babies in here. Actually, this is moving right here. I wonder if you're gonna be able to see one. Oh my gosh, there it is. I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but there are some really, really, really little guys in here. Look, to the left of my ring. Can you see that little guy? Let's see if I can grab him and put him on here so you guys can see. There he is, do you see that? See how tiny that little worm is? So those are my fresh babies that I just moved in here and I'm not gonna feed that to anything because I don't have anything that would eat one that tiny. So those are the ones that just got moved in here yesterday. So I highly recommend getting a sifting thing like this and just keeping your worms all in one container like this if you don't need them organized by size. If you do, then every time you move the brand from here and into a new bin, you're gonna wanna put the date and just kind of use them that way. Now let's go ahead and talk about how you get a darkling beetle from a super. Are you serious right now, Missy? Are you trying to be the star of the video? She's about to go to the bathroom in there and it's going to be loud. Hey, Tegu, look at, you guys just have to see her. Look at this. Hi, Matt. Hello. It is not your feeding day. Let's talk about ways and reasons why you may have not been successful at this. And let's also talk about how to get your adult superworm, your large superworm, into um, a darkling beetle because that was one of the most surprising things for me when I started breeding superworms. But um, superworms will not pupate. And you're out again. Seriously? Uh, superworms will not pupate if they are um, having constant stimulation with other worms touching them or if they are basically, in other words, if they are in a container with other worms and not kept solitary, they will not pupate and they will just stay superworms, which is actually a wonderful thing. Um, there, Celia, are you going to crawl up on me? She's like down here. Um, there have been a few few freak uh, pupations, if that's a word, in mine before where I'm like, how did you even do this? Like you're in a container with a bunch of other superworms. But 
They have to be kept separately so you can use like a tack box or any sort of little container and just make sure they can have air. You'll take them out of there, out of your container once they are full grown. And no, please don't crawl on that. Um, you'll take them out of the container when they are full grown, put them in their own separate container and in about seven to 10 days, they will have pupated and you will have a darkling beetle. So you have to have a male and a female, obviously, in order to breed. So I'll put some pictures on the screen to show you. No, you can't crawl in there. Um, <laughs> I'll leave a picture on the screen to show you what a male and a female looks like so you can differentiate the two. But I highly recommend trying to pupate about 12 beetles to start with or 12 superworms and get them to pupate into darkling beetles and then you'll be good to go. I think that's all I have for you guys. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, I'll try to leave it in the comments below, but thanks for watching guys and we will see you in the next video. Bye.